Hello again and welcome to a Bulgarian winter. Last Wednesday we woke up to 25 cm of snow, so we decided to test if we can fence normally in it. Today I am sharing with you the experiment with an arming sword and with buckler. We will be focusing on how the snow affected our distance management and especially when we get really close to each other. As no one had yet passed through this park, we were the first one to go through the snow. I'm with blue ribbons on my arms and my colleague Borisov is with our school's logo on his back. And we got close. You can see here that he's slipping a bit when he starts his attack, but then moves very quickly forward. We did got into grapple situation and the snow here may actually be helping me to stay a bit more solid to the ground. I try to dive in for the legs, but he goes down with me. Then when we are coming up, he pulls out his sword and manages to make a thrust. We notice that generally we are staying a bit closer than usual and moving less to the sides and more going forward and backwards. And we attribute this to the snow and to the minimal time for warm up that we had. In this exchange I am mostly trying to stand my ground while Borisov rushes in into close distance. As we can't really move just forward, we need to actually lift our legs a bit more to go above the snow. So this does change our footwork a bit. My passive parries manage to stop Borisov's cut and I go in between his head and hand. While I do establish arm control, my left leg slips and I actually fall down. But I did manage to put my point against his torso. We have now managed to rough up the snow a bit and our footwork is going to almost normal. Borisov even manages to do a very good thrust forward and I can't really move back. I displaced his initial attack as well as his cut. But then I lost balance and while going out he manages to do a clean cut to my head. Just so you know we didn't aim for always going to close distance. As you can see here, we're doing a lot of long distance cuts before that, aiming at hands and legs before we really get in. I initiate this exchange with an attempted cut to his hand. Then there is a series of parry and reposts while I slowly move forward while he makes a big step backwards. Then when I go for a leg cut, he sees the opportunity to go in. There are some exchanges at top and he manages to grab my hand quite well. Borisov isn't able to make a cut to my head, so he draws his arm backwards attempting to make a thrust. I manage to grab his sword and he lets it go. As he is now holding my right forearm, he goes for grapple. I am lower than him and go with my left hand to his right knee. As I am lifting him up, he can't balance on his other leg on the snow and when he's falling he releases my hand which allows me to drop over him. And just to point out that he is around 20 kilos more than me. Here we got a bit stuck in the snow. You can see that we have almost no movement before Borisov's thrust inside. A thrust that actually missed. We both make a mistake by closing in distance without properly establishing an opposition line. Now let's move forward and look at some sword and buckler. We are again using Albion's I-33 from the Maestro line. Borisov is with red dragon gloves and I am with sparring gloves. And I'll let you know in a couple of weeks why. The cold and the snow does have some other effects. This is why he actually dropped his sword. You can see here that I'm moving forward, making a shallow thrust and then a cut to the head. This is part of the way that we train, so we never miss a real opportunity. Several attempts here again to test the other's reaction, to try and make a cut to the hand or the leg or a thrust to the face. Again I got my back leg stuck a bit in the snow and couldn't really move out as much as I wanted to. 
Bugiswaf catches me off guard by attacking to my head from the right and then changing to my left side for an Unterhau. His hit though is a bit flat and he can't stop my sword with his buckler but enters into my face, so it's generally a double loss. Here I provoke him with a couple of moves to make him charge forward. When he does so, I displace his sword, then move to his side and make a solid cut to his head while blocking his sword arm with my buckler. Here we have around 10 minutes of fencing in the snow and we're starting to get used to it. We can even slip our legs from attempted attacks. In this exchange we missed basically all the attempted attacks. No trusts landed, no cuts landed, so we blocked everything with butlers and arms. There might be some shallow cuts to our sides from the swords, but if we assume that we are with jackets from the 14th and 15th century, it won't really matter. One final exchange with sword and buckler at close distance. Here the snow is almost a non-issue. You can see that we are moving almost freely now. Bobisov managed to trick me and go under my cut, so I missed him completely. And now you can see what happens when you drop your sword in 25 centimeters of snow. While we are looking for those swords, I would like to let you know that next week I will upload another video from this series. It will be with the same weapons, but this time the exchanges that we had at large distance. We also had a few sparring matches with sword and buckler against longsword and with longswords. So these will come later this month.